Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the German Tier 8 Premium Heavy Tank, the Asterion M48A2 Round Panzer. So this is the Asterion. It is different to the M48A2 Round Panzer in the fact that they basically made it heavy and changed a fair bit of the stats. So they made the armour on the frontal well, the frontal armour better, naturally, because they made it a heavy tank, and they gave it a different gun. Now, the Asterion has the same Halloween ability, because it is one of the Halloween tanks, it has the same Halloween ability as the Dreaddozer, which is the m 48 a 2 but obviously they changed all the stats and made it a new tank, unique tank, whatever you want to call it, because they're not going to sell the Hot Wheels tanks again, so... We got the Asterion, so that you could basically get that same ability that the Dreaddozer has, and they, let's say they wanted to make a unique tank. It's it's okay. It's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of this tank. And that's because, frontal on, the armour is really nice. But as soon as they get slightly round your side, your armour becomes not very good at all. And you turn like a slug. You're not the most agile tank in the universe. You're not the quickest. The gun's a bit mediocre. So it's just it's one of those tanks that I just don't feel like I enjoy all that much. If you can keep yourself pun pointing frontally onto the enemy team, then you can bounce a lot of damage, and then you can try and work them over with the 360 alpha that this tank has. But the gun, like I say, can troll you a little bit because it's got 0.4 accuracy, 2.7 aim time, and the reload with a flat 13 seconds just isn't that nice for 360 alpha either. I mean, there's a fair few 390 alpha tanks that are reloading quicker than that. It just means that all in all, the tank just feels a bit like a slug and is not entirely that enjoyable for me personally. I just, yeah, I feel like I could do better with a lot of other tanks and I enjoy a lot of other tanks far, far more. Say, take the Inferno Chimera, for example, that I did a video on yesterday. It's just more enjoyable for me than this tank is. I say it can, it can be pretty decent and when you're, especially when you're top tier and you're facing tanks and you keep, you know, bottom tier tanks, mid tier tanks, the same tier tanks, tier 8s, and you keep this tank frontally on to people, you can have a really nice alpha, but yeah, the gun being fairly derpy at times, the mobility not being that great, and it just not feeling very agile, which generally means that, yeah, I just don't enjoy the tank all too much, really. So, in terms of a crew on the Asterion, I do run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Trap Mechanic, Clutch Breaking, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun. The three gun perks, because this gun is very derpy at 0.4 and 2.7 accuracy, you very, very much want to help it out as much as you can, because that accuracy will let you down a fair amount, which can be a little bit sad at times. And then the clutch braking, because your track traverse is only 22 degrees a second, I believe, which is really not that quick. It's In fact, it's actually 24 degrees a second, and the turret rotation speed is 22 degrees a second. Yeah, the, the track traverse is really not very good, so I really want to try and make it so I can at least turn the tank to face, keep the strength of the tank going, which is the frontal armour, towards the enemy team. Because I could go with rapid aim and make the turret traverse better, because like I say, the turret traverse is actually worse than the track traverse, but... I want to be able to keep my armour frontally on because if th something tries to get around you, really struggle to get this tank turned back around to face them. And it can be deeply frustrating to play at times. And it's just one thing that I really, really, really want to help. I mean, if you wanted to, you could probably drop something like Snapshot to put Rapid Aim on as well to get the truck traverse even better. It's down to you. It depends on how you feel with the gun. But yeah, the gun just irritates me, so I really wanted to make that as good as I possibly could as well. Because I actually run the Advanced Loader, the Vertical Stabilizers, and the Optics as well. Optics will be able to help spot for myself because you do have 380 meters view range, which is pretty good for a tier 8 heavy. That's pretty standard for a tier 8 heavy tanker well this tier so you can basically use it to spot for yourself get on a ridge line get some good assistance all that good stuff and you never want to be blind in world war ii you always want to try and make your view range as good as you could possibly get it and like i say gun stabilizers because i want this gun to be able to actually hit things and the advanced loader to make the dpm as good as possible because they say the reload is tragic it's just not very nice at all and you want to be able to make the reload better if you humanly can do so this first game, as you can see, we are against some tier 9 tanks. We're on vineyards, and we've pushed quite aggressively down the AB line. And now we're just pushing forward to see if we could light up any more targets that were sat along the K line for my friends that were sat back at D8. 
We're going to try and use this ridge line to poke up and spot if we can, and that way we can also stay safe and try and keep putting shots out with 360 Alpha, because 360 Alpha is not in insignificant at tier 8. It's a pretty nice Alpha to have. It's just, I kind of wish this reload was like 2 or 3 seconds faster. Maybe 2 seconds faster, because it's just, it's so slow. It reminds me of the Basante, you know, in terms of how slow the reload is. And then the accurate, actually, there's quite a lot that reminds me of the Basante in this tank, because it's got 218 pen, it's got 282 pen on the APCR, which is one of the the nice thing is, is that the fact that the premium round is an APCR round, so it means it, it's pretty good when you're going against the tier 9s and 10s, because you're not having to struggle with heat rounds. You've got APCR that won't, you know, just get absorbed by random spaced armor. But your 282 penetration on the APCR, premium APCR, is fantastic. You'll pen pretty much most tanks you're going to face with that. And 218 ain't too bad either. But with the derpy gun, the really bad reload, that's what reminds me of the Basante in terms of how that handles, essentially. So as you can see, we're getting some shots into the side of this Death Chariot currently, and we're just trying to hopefully finish him off. He pulls back, which gives us a shot into his side, and we shut him down. We've pushed into a very aggressive position where we're just hopefully trying to keep, use these rocks to block some shots. We bounced the shot from the heavy tank that was over on our right, and we blocked the shot from the Earthshaker. We're going to get up to this rock in front of us to be able to use it as cover to keep us safe and then we actually spot this amx m451 up too we go for the shot into his track so i want to try and track him in place hopefully someone might have a shot into him sh to penetrate him but it's not quite happening we have loaded apcr to make sure that we could go through his lower plate if we needed to but the amx m451 sorry is starting to move away so now we're going to try and see if we can angle ourselves to get a shot at this 51 because if we move across this bridge we might be able to get a position to shoot him in the side if we can so we're gonna try and hop the bridge at 35 kilometers an hour hopefully it works i really hope it does oh yeah just just oh that was very close that was oh, nail biting a little bit but we've got into the position we want to be in we get a shot into the side of the amx m451 which tracks him in place and the rubber Bolsig ends up finishing the 51 off. And we finished the game with a decent total in tier 9 game. We finished with the victory. One kill. 3.2k damage. 1800 assistance. We ended up 4.5k blocked. The steel wall, the confederate, the first class. Yeah, the steel wall, 4.5k blocked. Like I say, if you keep this tank's frontal armor on to the enemy team, you will bounce a solid amount of rounds. Because the armor on this tank is really nice. Especially with the shovel being a lot of spaced armor. It means that the frontal armor is absolutely solid on the Asterion. Which is what I mean by as soon as it turns ever so slight. This is one of those tanks that you don't want to angle. <laughs> you want to keep pointing frontally on towards the enemy team. Because the moment you angle, you just give them shots into your side. And they start to easily pen you. Whereas if you... Yeah, if you keep it frontally on, that's where you will just bounce and bounce and bounce. The one weak spot that you do have on the tank is the cupola on top, which is something that you've got to try and make as hard as possible for people to hit. It is a fairly large cupola, so it's not the hardest in the universe to hit. So when you're on ridge line, stuff like that, just keep yourself wiggling, keep yourself moving, dip, dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge, and you will bounce shots. I said the armor on the tank is really nice. It's just a shame that the gun lets it down a bit. Um, with the mobility, I mean, the mobility is a balancing factor, which is nice, but it's, it would have been nice for at least the gun to behave a little bit better, a bit be a bit better in terms of the performance too. So, we're on to the second replay. In the second replay, we are on Grim Graveyard, which is the Halloween version of Prokhorovka. And playing Grim Graveyard is similar to Proc, but a little bit different. And by that, I mean that, you know, you can come to the same positions, similar positions on Grim Graveyard work as they do on Prokhorovka. But there's extra little bits and bobs which help you and help the enemy team from positions. So take this position, for example. This position is a bit harder to use on Grim Graveyard because we have a building that is directly in front of us there behind that dead Crash Panther or that scenery Crash Panther, which blocks the two line. So it blocks our vision a little bit down that two line so it doesn't help you to be able to keep spotting things, which you might be able to spot things usually at H2 and G2 from this position but that building basically makes it so you have to really come over the ridge line but it also helps you because it means you can come over this ridge line a little bit more aggressively because you are covered from a lot of where people will camp along that two line which is quite nice but also the amount of scenery the amount of scenery crash panthers that will block shots also makes it more awkward when you're trying to get shots into people too because there's just so much more dead wreckage that you can hit 
So as you can see, we're pushing very aggressively to try and get shots at this TNH. We've been pushing over for ages trying to get shots at this guy, and I've not been getting shot at by anyone other than the TNH. So I'm like, you know what? This is fine. No one is looking at me. There must not be much down there at K2. There must be a load of people on the hill. Well, finally, eventually, <laughs> it's one of those cases of no one was shooting at me for so long that we got big balls. We went big balls, we went over, and we started to try and push the tempo into the TNH. Unfortunately, the gun kept derping, so we couldn't quite hit the cupola of the TNH. And then all of a sudden, bang, 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 all the hit points, 1,200 hit points in about one second flat disappeared. Completely vanished. We got slapped out of nowhere. And it's like, where have you all been? I've been sat on this ridge for like a whole minute. How have you only just started shooting at me? Which is the whole reason that I was pushing so aggressively because I was pushing so aggressively because I wasn't getting punished So it's like well, we've not really spot in the hill They must have a lot on the hill and not much down the two line so we can push aggressively at these guys over the ridge line and try and shut them down But clearly not and we took some big hits So we do have to be a bit more careful now when we're push pushing over this ridge line We do know there's stuff now back there that can punish us Push, punishers were at 1400 damage with 952 assistance 2.5k block though which is pretty good so far and we're just watching what's going off we're just trying to keep track of what is alive and I was looking what could be at the back and I was thinking you know the thing that hit me so hard it could be something like an ISU 152k it's got a big gun how did that how uh, okay game sure I don't know how that shot it <laughs> I basically pulled the trigger where the ridge line is. So, thank you, RNG, for letting me hit that, that inferno there. It's nice. It puts him down to a one-shot. And we've been still mindful of the TNH-105-1000. I do want to push over and try and get a shot at him. If I keep the rock directly to my right, I should be more safe from the things that shot me from J2. But... I was still hesitating because, well, he, clearly we lost a lot of hit points very quickly and I don't want to die at this point. We're just trying to get some shots into this Draugon, which, oh, he took a big hit there, which puts him down to a one-shot and we end up shutting the Draugon down. By the way, sorry for any little sound bugs there is with this replay and the last replay. There's a little annoying replay bug that happens occasionally when I'm re recording where it starts stuttering in the sound. It's really, really quite annoying. Although I'm going to turn it down a fair bit so that you're not going to suffer it from it too much as I am right now recording this video. So, anyway, besides the point, besides the, the audio bug, we start to go over to try and get some shots into this TNH-105-1000. We load the APCR because I was thinking, well, maybe I can get a shot into his upper plate and pen him with the APCR. No, unfortunately, we end up bouncing because we hit the stupid angle there on that guy. And now that TNH is, well, he's now been attacked by a light tank. Which means that that light tank being where he is, is not spotting anything, really, that's going to make us pay. We've got a TD that's pushed down to G2. So that means that I can be more aggressive at this point, and I can push over and try and finish off this TNH. We're going for that Coppola again, and unfortunately, it just flies straight over. And we missed the shot on that guy, and he ends up getting shut down. We did end up taking a hit as well, though. It puts us down to 22 hit points, which is not a good time. The TNA, TANK at the back over there is spotted. We try and get a shot at him, but he doesn't quite back off as, as I expected him to. There's now the Freedom at the back. We're aiming for the back end of his side so we can try and track and pen him. We do put a shot into it there, which is nice. He's surprisingly not losing many hit points. I thought he would be losing far more than he was. There we go. And just as we fire, just as we fire, just as we fire, the freedom ends up moving away and oh, we ended up missing the shot. Now the T30 spot at the back. We aim the shot in, slap it straight through his upper plate. That puts us on to 3.1k damage of 1300 assistance. And there's two tanks left. You see that? There was a round that flew off of the top of the hill. That means there's a tank on top of the hill, so we're going to try and close into position that we're ready to shoot it. The KPZ 50T, or the Kampanzer 50T, I don't know why I said KPZ, it's KPZ. <coughs> the KPZ is on the hill. We tried to get a shot into him, and unfortunately it missed. Luckily, though, he bounced off of us, and now we're in a position where we can be hulled down against this guy, get a shot into his side, and we're just going to try and make it, like I say, as difficult as possible for him to hit us. He is, tra well, he did get trapped there. He has given us his side, and the Kampfpanzer can't quite side scrape that well. So we get another shot into the side of this Kampfpanzer, hopefully going to get the reload in time to shut him down, but unfortunately we don't quite do it. The TANK is 
the last one alive on the enemy team. He is at B0. The light tank at D7 is trying to shoot him and shoot him down currently, but failing. So I'm looking at this going, mm, maybe I can get the kill. That'd be very nice, wouldn't it? We're up to 3.8k damage, 1,300 assistance, and 3,070 blocks. And yeah, hopefully we get to that light tank. The, the, the TANK shuts down the HWK12, which means we are now in the driving seat. We're now in the driving seat to get that second kill of the game. And we are praying that we get there. We do have to be careful, though, because all he has to do is splash us to kill us. So we do have to make sure that he doesn't snapshot us. But we also had to make sure that we were going to get the shot in because this gun can be derpy, like I say. And finish the game with a pretty nice total for the Asterion. Finish with two kills, 3.9k damage, 1,351 base tech. 151 assistance, sorry, 1848 base XP. A damn nice game for the Asterion with the first class. And yeah, that's the Asterion. It's another one of the tanks that you can earn in this Halloween earn up. I do think there's better out there. I don't think this tank is that great, honestly. It's not bad, but I do think there's a lot better out there, say, like the Inferno, for instance. So, as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!